I'm gonna take a piece of chapati and scoop up for my first bite. Oh wow, that is amazing. Good morning everyone, it's Mark Weens with Migrationology.com in Mumbai, India. It is almost 9 a.m. This is our first day in Mumbai and I have a bunch I have a list of a bunch of things, a bunch of places to eat and some attractions, some sightseeing to do. But really I find it really kind of hard to make a, a set itinerary when you don't really know how to navigate around. So we are just off to just walk around for a little while and see what happens today. Our hotel is in the Kulaba area, but we're taking a little walk down the road or past a couple roundabouts to an area called Fort. One of the things I love about India and that I remember from my previous trips to India is that even in the huge cities, the congested huge cities, you can still always hear the birds chirping in the trees. That's pretty awesome. And all of a sudden it looks like it's gonna downpour. Even the birds are flying away. Oh, okay, it's starting to rain right now as I'm talking. We didn't get that far, or we didn't get anything accomplished, but it has started raining. So far, walking around this area is really nice. What I really like are all of the trees. So many trees and then just like kind of decaying old buildings, but it's, it's beautiful to walk around this area. Luckily the rain didn't last very long. And so we are walking now over to one of the main train stations, which is known in brief as CST. The real name is Chattapati Shivaji Terminus, which I am reading from up here. But the old name is VT, which is Victoria Terminal and there are just masses of people. It is, like a, it is like a humidity steam bath in Mumbai right now after that rain. Today we're gonna stop right here for chai. One tea, four tea. One tea. Thank you. Oh, Bangkok. Bangkok. Let's take a glass. Okay. Thank you very much. Welcome. One of the absolute best joys of being in India is drinking chai. And you just walking down the streets, there are tea stalls everywhere you look. They brew it fresh and they add milk in it and then they squeeze out the, the tea leaves and then they serve it to you just in small cups and it's always piping hot. Actually, like burning hot. My fingers are on fire right now. <laughs> Oh. oh, I have missed you. Oh, that's wonderful. It's strong tea. You can taste just a hint of spice in there and maybe maybe a little bit of cardamom in there. And then it's creamy. It's just fantastic. There's just nothing greater than standing along the side of the street drinking a cup of chai. Yeah. Drinking cups of hot tea on the side of the road is just one of the great joys of being in India. Oh, it's so good. It's such a simple, fantastic thing. We are now walking to try and find a very legendary restaurant in Mumbai. I think it's right there. How are you? We're fine. You're from? From Thailand. Thailand? Yes. Okay. This is my friend. Okay, good, good. 
Why you came here? Uh, just traveling and eating. Just traveling. Yeah. Came to eat. Okay. Indian food. Okay, Britain here. Yeah. Is it open yet? Yeah, just now open. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> nice to meet you. Thank you. When I asked for restaurant recommendations in Mumbai, Britannia and Company so was one of the top recommendations. So I am here. This restaurant is famous for serving Parsi food, which is a combination of Iranian, Persian food, and Indian food. And so this is a type of cuisine that you have to eat when you are in Mumbai. Also, we got here kind of right as they opened, so we beat the lunch rush, but I'm sure in maybe an hour from now when the offices are let out, this place is gonna be packed and our first dish has just arrived. I also got a fresh chapati. Oh, you can feel how fresh and kind of, it's kind of like dense but fluffy at the same time. And just scoop up for my first bite. Oh wow, that is amazing. That mutton is kind of like stringy and then the flavor that's wrapped up in it. But the, the like blend of spices in there, I'm not even totally sure what is all in there. But wow, it's flavorful. And it's really not, it's kind of watery as opposed to buttery or oily, which is really nice. And then all those little fried crispies on there, they kind of add an extra texture dimension. It's not so strong like an Indian curry, but it has a little bit of a milder taste to it but incredibly good. I'm gonna add some of these onions though. These onions are very tempting. Oh, and a, a wedge of lime. This might give it the added boost of like fresh crunch to it. Not that it needs anything extra, but I'm just kind of a, an onion kind of guy. Okay, that's a lot of onions. Wow. It's such, a, it's such an amazing blend of spices and meat. I also don't want to pass up this opportunity to mention how good the chapati is. The chapati is like kind of gooey, but then it's light and just, it, it actually is really, it's an amazing chapati. Thank you very much. Okay. I didn't even notice this at first when I sat down at the restaurant, but something I have to point out to you is this bouquet of napkins. What a beautiful stack. I'm gonna grab one off the top here. And then also on the napkins. That is my kind of a phrase. The other dishes that we ordered have arrived. And one of the dishes that this restaurant is very well known for is their berry pulav. And pulav is it's similar to biryani, not quite the same, actually quite different, uh, but they're famous for serving a berry version, and I think, I think the berries are like... Bar berries, Iranian dry fruit. Oh, okay. Okay, bar berry. Yeah. Okay, they are called bar berries, and they are, yeah, they look kind of like very small raisins, very dried up, and or little black currants, and then also on the top, there were a bunch of fried shallots, and then we got the one with chicken. Oh, that's a big nugget of chicken. But let me just taste, making sure I got a lot of those berries in there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's so fragrant. And those little berries, they kind of have a sour, a sour taste to them. It's not really very strong in flavor, but everything really just harmonizes together. And then the final dish we got is something called dansak, which is the Parsi version of lentils. And we got the mutton version, so there's chunks of mutton in it as well. And then it's served with this big plate of rice, which is some kind of spiced or fragrant rice as well as, uh, as, well as a couple of, I think these are mutton meatballs. I'll put some of the rice down as the base and then go for some of the dansak oh and those are big chunks of mutton i just want to taste that dansak actually first mm. Mm. there's some kind of very unique spice in there like maybe fenugreek 
but it has a very unique, distinct spice to it. Spices inside is the green chili, red, red chili also. I was thinking there was some kind of spice in it, but I just asked the waiter and he told me that it's both green chili and red chili in there that make, gives it the flavor and then it's just the lentils. So it has kind of that, that lentil grainy texture to it. Piece of that mutton, oh yes, tender mutton. That was some really good food and one of the things that also is highly recommended here that I think just about everybody who eats here orders for dessert is the caramel custard and I don't really have a sweet tooth but I have to try it. Mm. Wow it's almost like cream cheesy just lightly caramel flavored and then sweet not like silky soft smooth but kind of like like um airy smooth yeah that is that is very good it's, it's like a it's kind of like a stiff pudding and oh. old man <laughs> very nice <laughs> they had been to mumbai two months ago and they invited me to that oh okay so i went and met them all okay 1200 years ago uh -huh. the persians fled iran and they landed on the shore of India, Mumbai. And so the Maharaja here gave, gave them support and gave them help. So they stayed here. Mm. So they adopted part of party, party, culture, Hindu culture. And that is called Parsi culture, Persian, with Hindu. They were Zoroastrian. Zoroastrian. Okay. They were Zoroastrian. Our prophet's name is Zoroaster. Oh, okay. And they are called Zoroastrian. But the Indians, when we came to India, the Indians called us Parsi. Parsi. Yeah. The Parsi food is a combination yeah, so, of... So you have a combination of Persian and Indian food here. Okay. The berry, berry. Did you have the berry? Yes, we had the chicken berry. So it's a Very nice. Of Indian uh -huh. and Persian. Just finished our meal at Britannia and Company. The food was incredible. I especially liked the berry pulav, the rice dish with those berries on top, and also that saliboti was just unbelievably good. What really makes this restaurant uh, like a, a heritage and just a beautiful place is because of the owners and the, the history of the restaurant. The owner, he is 94 years old at the time of making this video and he is up and around talking and greeting all of everyone eating at the restaurant, telling stories. He'll definitely tell you some stories but he's an extremely nice man and he's, he's really an inspiration. Hello, bye Kula. Lunch was extremely good. I am stuffed, so we decided to jump into a taxi and we're on our way to go visit a museum next. drove all the way to a museum called Dr. Bao Daji Museum, but unfortunately today they're closed. Even though the opening hours said they were open today, but they said today it's randomly closed. So instead we're gonna drive over to the Gandhi Museum. Something that will never get old or boring is looking out the window while driving around in India. There's just so much action happening everywhere you look. It just started downpouring again. It will like downpour for a few minutes and then just kind of drizzle for a while and then it will downpour and then it will stop and then it will downpour again. Lots of people. <laughs> this is the biggest laundromat. As we were driving on our way to the museum, our taxi driver, who is very kind, uh, stopped here at Dobigat. And Dobigat 
is Mumbai's largest open air laundromat. We're gonna go down the stairs to the bottom of the laundromat and just take a quick look. You kinda gotta walk around the outside, but I think this is the main entrance. Hello. Hello. It's not too busy right now. Maybe it's the time of the day that we're here right in the middle of the afternoon. But this is like an entire, an entire community, an entire village that washes clothes. And there are just pools of water. We can only stay here for a few minutes because our taxi driver is waiting on the bridge for us. But it's really interesting to walk around. This is just an entire, oh, be careful. You gotta be careful where you're walking or you will end up in the laundromat. But it's very interesting to see. And this is Mumbai's largest open air laundromat. Maybe one of the largest open air laundromats in the entire world. Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm... You can be careful. Sorry. Because it's the rainy season in Mumbai right now, and it's been raining off and on all day, when it stops raining, the air is just so incredibly humid. It's just saturated with water. You can probably see my face right now. I don't know, can you see beads of perspiration? But just walking around Dobi Ghat for a few seconds and I'm just, I'm just literally dripping. My shirt is just, just, you could probably wring this out like the laundromat. We drove over now to the Mani Bawan Gandhi Museum and it's amazing the contrast in Mumbai from the main roads that are just out of control to the side streets and neighborhoods where it's so quiet and just tree-lined and it's really beautiful on these side streets. Um, our taxi driver was really nice. His name was Pradeep. Thank you Pradeep. And we are now stopping here at the museum. This is the house where Gandhi lived when he would make his visits to Mumbai from I think it was from about 1917 to 1934. So there's a library in there and mostly the museum just walks you through a lot of photographs of Gandhi and his impact on both India and the world and just his incredible work and the things that he did and it's it's really a quiet peaceful place in there you can just kind of stroll around leisurely our next plan of action is to walk over to Chaupati beach which is should just be a few minutes walk away from where we are right now and hopefully we'll yeah we'll walk close to the beach enjoy the views and hopefully there will be some snacks around that area as well to enjoy i'm ready for some snacks We made it to Chaupati, which is one of the main beaches in Mumbai. It's a, it's a huge expanse of sand and there are crows or pigeons flying over. You get a nice view of the city and I think we're just gonna walk along this stretch of beach for a little while. Okay. Very nice dresses. Thanks. So many people in Mumbai are so friendly. This is not really a swimming beach. Hello. 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 Hi. How are you? I'm fine. Nice to meet you. This isn't really a swimming beach, although there are some kids swimming, but it's more of a strolling beach. It has a huge sandbank, so you can just walk along. Okay, nice to meet you. Bye. Bye. Ying and I have had a selfie marathon here at Chaupati Beach. One of my favorite things to eat, street food snacks, is called Pani Puri, which are little puris, which are little crispy 
like fritters, which are hollow, and then they're filled with a combination of chickpeas and a like spice fragrant water. Thank you. So this this is the pani puri, and the the outside is the puri, and then inside is chickpeas, and then he fills it with some. I think there's tamarind water as well as like some like minty water. Well, actually, I'll find out. But you eat them by the single, and you gotta eat them fast before they go soggy on you. Mm. Oh, it's amazing. It just explodes with like juices. It's salty. It's a little bit spicy. You can taste like a little bit of like a minty freshness. And then you have like these starchy chickpeas in there as well, all wrapped up by like a, a hollow chip. Oh, it's good. And once you finish one bite, you get another one. Okay. Thank you. Mm. It's such a genius snack. Like I would I would never think to add liquid to a chip, but it works so incredibly well. What I love about it most, I think I probably have some some driplets of the, the Pani Puri water going down my chin. It's so flavorful, and it just sort of explodes with, yeah, it explodes with spice and flavor, and it's a wonderful snack. Mm. It's both a little bit sweet, but salty and spicy more so. It's wonderful. I think I have a couple left more in my set. And then when you're done eating your pani puri, you have some water at the bottom that has fallen out of your puri so you can drink it. It's so refreshing. It's almost like drinking mint juice, but with a tamarind sweetness and nice and salty. Oh, thank you. Oh, one more. Okay. okay, next up he handed me a dry puri. Mm. Yeah, that's good too. That tastes like a, a chip with bean dip in the middle. Mm. That pani puri was superb, and they have a sign that says they use fresh filtered water, so that's that's great, uh, because it's definitely a snack that you need to be careful eating because of the water content, but it's so good. It's such a it's such a genius combination, but now I am, I'm so thirsty right now, I need a big bottle of water, and so there's a stall right over here that I'm gonna grab a bottle of water from. Thank you. How much is it? Thank you. I have been sweating all day long and haven't drank that much water. But after eating a salty snack like Pani Puri, I am I'm feeling the thirst. <laughs> Oh, cold water tastes incredible. As I was drinking that water, all of a sudden we heard like a, a roar of people and just like a whole stampede of people running this way because it started downpouring all of a sudden again. So we are standing underneath an umbrella, underneath a tree, and... But it's a fast rain. Like it, it rained really hard for about one minute. And now it's stopping again. I think so. 
了吧。We took that taxi over to, we're very close to where we started off this morning, where our hotel is, and we are gonna go to the Chattapati Shivaji Maharat Vastu Sangrahalaya Museum, which is, we have just arrived right here. It's pretty expensive to visit at 500 rupees entrance, and then they also charge for photography. Inside, it was pretty interesting. There are all sorts of different exhibitions about the history of India. My, definitely my favorite exhibition was the sculpture, where there are ancient sculptures, especially rock carvings. And also what I really like about this museum is just the actual museum structure itself. It kind of has a gothic feel to it, but then at the same time the dome really looks like it has Islamic influence. And I know the architect who designed this uh, building or the structure also designed the gateway of India for our final attraction stop this afternoon We are taking the walk. It's just about a five-minute walk from the museum to the gateway of India <laughs> We entered into the main entrance of the gateway of India, but they were pretty strict about no video So I was told not to video so now we're gonna try to go around to the outside to get a view of it Okay, if you walk down the road a little ways, there are some great views of the Gateway of India. And then also on this side is the Taj Palace Hotel, which is also a very famous landmark in Mumbai. I can smell the aroma of meat as we approach. This restaurant, which happens to be literally right around the corner from the hotel where we're staying at, is called Bademia. And they are very, very well known throughout all of Mumbai for serving kebabs and all sorts of non-vegetarian food. Although they do have a vegetarian section, separate section, but most of what they serve is all sorts of grilled meat. Oh, thank you. I kind of got a little bit confused because I wasn't sure if we were gonna just stand outside. It's very common for you to just stand outside and order the rolls and just stand on the street and eat. But then they they have this huge like dining room, which is actually quite nice to sit down and it kind of feels like you're in a fort. So the reason that my food is on to go where is because I thought we were just gonna stand, but then we decided to sit. I'm gonna go ahead and begin with the mutton shik kebab. And these are freshly grilled, oh, just fingers of meat add some of this chutney and that looks like a maybe like a mint chutney and with some onions and I'm just going in straight meat steak oh yeah kebabs do it for me every time the flavor of the smoke that is just embedded into that minced meat is amazing and actually it does taste the meat kind of tastes lean it doesn't taste too oily and you can also taste a lot of onions in there and maybe some kind of like parsley. And they are that sauce is a little bit spicy as well. Oh yeah. I'm a little bit obsessed with kebabs. They are very well known for their rolls and they make the bread fresh and so he had a it's like an upside down dough with a fire underneath it and he, he spread out the dough and then put it on there and it cooks just in a, a couple seconds. And I ordered the chicken buna roll. Oh, actually, I think I should not actually unravel it. I think you're supposed to pair it. Pair so you don't lose any juices on the bottom. Oh yeah, that's a much better way to eat it. That bread, that bread is amazing. It's really very similar to a tortilla. And that's like shredded chicken with kind of a tomato-y, spicy kind of, yeah, sauce. Mm. Yeah, that is, that is a comfort roll. What I am gonna attempt to do though, is add some more sauce and some onions. And scoop that on there. 
Oya. And since we're sitting here, I could not resist ordering another piece of chicken. And it is just, you can just see it coated in flavor and then grilled to a crisp. What I like about the chicken is that you can really taste the grilled flavor. It has an amazing roasted flavor. The good news is I asked for a refill on the sauce. So he gave me a whole plate of both the red sauce and the green sauce with some onions. This will taste great with the chicken. Oh, those onions too just enhance everything. And the reason I didn't order more bread, apart from the roll, is because Ying and I are actually both still kind of hungry from lunch. Lunch was a big meal. Um, so yeah, I'm sticking to mostly protein for this dinner. All the food I tried was very good. The chicken leg was maybe a little bit dry, but I think probably, definitely my favorite thing was the chicken buna roll. That, that is insanely good. That's something you have to eat here. And I am down to my last bite right now. It is the, the wonderful last bite where all the oils have all accumulated at the bottom. And so definitely the, the final bite is always the best. That is a must eat in Mumbai. Okay. Thank you. Welcome, sir. Thank you. I'm ready. Thank you. Okay. That was a highly satisfying dinner, and that is going to be the last thing I do today before I go straight to bed. It's, I have to admit, I'm pretty wiped out. It has been a uh, hot and busy and just a, a fantastic first day in Mumbai. So I'm gonna end the video right now. Thank you all very much for watching. Thank you. And I just got another napkin. And please remember to give this video a thumbs up if you, if you enjoyed it and leave a comment below. Oh, and another napkin. <laughs> and, and also make sure you subscribe for lots more food videos and I will see you on the next video. Tomorrow is another beautiful day in Mumbai.